so far we have studied four different dc to dc converters they are first one is buck buck converter the output voltage v0 is d into vdc second one is boost the output voltage is vdc divided by 1 minus d okay and this expression is not valid for high values of d okay so in a non ideal boost you need to take into the resistance of the inductor into account while deriving the transfer function and we found that this voltage output voltage reaches a peak and it comes down and becomes zero when d is equal to 1 same thing is true for buck boost as well as the chuck converter okay ideal converters say that v not tends to infinity where in non ideal converter the output voltages in all three buck buck boost and chuck they become zero okay these expressions are valid only if the inductor current is continuous remember okay these expressions are valid only if the inductor current is continuous and these expressions are independent of the inductor current magnitude of inductor current okay they do not mention or there is no term containing il in the input output relations okay so if the current is discontinuous we found that the output voltage is higher than these expressions whatever is given by these the transfer functions okay we found in buck boost as well as cook the output voltage is negative with respect to the dc bus since there is no isolation there is no isolation between input and output okay in other words i can have only one common reference in these circuits in all the four i can have only one common reference generally we will take negative dc bus as the reference point so in other words input and output are non isolated they are not isolated okay now so far we have studied ac to dc conversion we have seen almost all the possible class of converter circuits and we have studied four numbers of dc to dc conversion so after doing that if i ask you to design a power supply uh, design a 5 volt regulated power supply the dc is derived from ac and then at the input i give a constraint saying that power factor should be unity okay now what sort of a circuit you will suggest conditions is ac to dc conversion input is 230 volts power factor should be unity at the output i want to have 5 volt regulated dc power supply and it should efficiency should be reasonably high and you need not or you should not use a linear regulator okay your solution could be of this type okay say 230 volts 50 hertz supply i use or you may use switch mode switch mode rectification power factor is unity here so you have a output voltage vivo 1 okay and a buck regulator wherein you will get 5 volts power supply you may suggest this sort of a configuration let me tell you one thing there are far superior configurations available for this power supply okay this is not the one there are far more superior configurations than the this one so having studied so far if you come out with this sort of a suggestion i would i would suggest that is some sort of an excellent suggestion from me okay now so we'll see the problems here 230 is the input 
you have used a switch mode rectification okay so v1 will be definitely higher than 230 into root 2 okay because smr can work satisfactorily only if v1 is higher than the peak of the input okay so v1 could be of the order of 350 to 400 volts so 350 to 400 volts is the input to a buck converter and output is 5 so if i assume a continuous conduction or inductor current output voltage is proportional to the input voltage and it is equal to d into vdc so what is the value of d so it comes out to be see v not is higher than 325 because v not is 5 volts so d is of the order of 0 0.01 okay 5 divided by 325 minimum that i am considering see th this should be higher than 230 into root 2 230 into root 2 okay minimum value here could be of the order of 350 to 400 volts or so if i use an smr and you may have to use an smr because i said that input uh, input is uh, input power factor should be unity okay now if you switch the dc to dc converter at 100 kilohertz okay so t becomes 10 microseconds so dt is of the order of 100 nanoseconds or the device is on for approximately 100 nanoseconds so dt is 0 0.01 duty cycle is 0 0.01 so definitely the inductor current is going to be discontinuous because i am storing energy for a very small fraction of the cycle d is 0 0.01 duty cycle okay so i'm storing for a very small duration and most of the time stored energy is being dumped to the output so definitely inductor current is going to be discontinuous so if the inductor current is going to be discontinuous output voltage is no longer equal to d into vdc it's going to be higher than d into vdc we have seen this what is another problem we found that the on time is of the order of 100 nanoseconds while assuming the transfer function or in the in all our analysis we considered devices to be ideal in other words the on time of the device and off time of the device we have neglected now the device is is on for 100 nanosecond definitely this figure is going to be comparable with the on time and off time of the device okay so d is very small switch is switched at a fairly high frequency i you cannot neglect the device nonlinearities apart from the other passive elements the nonlinearity of the passive elements so that is a problem one so what is the second problem the second problem is in in buck in buck boost boost and chuck converter buck boost boost and chuck converter as d tends to 1 the ripple in the output voltage as well as the output current increases okay so as d tends to 1 most of the time inductor is connected across this supply output voltage output capacitor is supplying power to the load so ripple in the inductor current as well as the capacitor voltage increases okay and the assumptions that we made are no longer valid okay that is beside the point so if the ripple is going to increase definitely i need to choose 
the devices of higher current rating and voltage rating okay because that the input source is short circuited so source is source may get short circuited because inductor is being connected across a dc power supply and is al almost permanently because d tends to 1 maybe okay so in this non ideal converters output voltage tends to 0 and not to infinity as d tends to 1 and this v not the peak value of v not depends on r by r ratio where small the r is the inductor resistance divided by the load resistance ratio so what do i can conclude now i can conclude that vdc and vo cannot be greatly different in other words magnitude of vdc cannot be greatly different from the magnitude of v0 okay we found input voltage is of the order of 400 volts if i use an smr from a single for a, from a single phase supply output voltage is of the order of 5 volts d is going to be very small okay then we have a problem now if i want to boost a low voltage dc to a very high voltage dc the transfer function says that d should tends towards 1 then again we have a problem so therefore these converters you cannot have the magnitude of the input voltage greatly different from the magnitude of the output voltage okay. what next the situation demands input is 230 50 hertz power factor should be unity and i want a 5 volt regulator power supply or input could be a 12 volt battery sub battery dc and i want to boost the dc voltage to a higher value what should i do in all these three circuits sorry in all these four circuits we have used an inductor input is dc output is dc and we did not allow the inductor to saturate so in other words you can use a inductor in a dc circuit provided you do not allow it to saturate if i can use an inductor in the dc circuit i can also use a transformer in a dc circuit provided i do not allow the transformer to saturate okay our machine teacher might have told us that if you connect a transformer to the dc supply yeah there is going to be a short circuit and transformer get damaged i am not saying that it is wrong but here i am telling you that you connect a transformer to the dc supply but then do not allow it to saturate okay if there is a d5 by dt in the primary because if i connect a dc supply to an inductor or a primary of the transformer current will increase linearly so if the current increases or if the magnetizing current increases linearly flux also will increase linearly so there is going to be a d5 by dt till the inductor saturates and i told you that i am not allowing the inductor to saturate so there is d5 by dt in the primary so if there is a d5 by dt in the primary there will be a voltage induced in the secondary okay so therefore you can use a transformer in a dc to dc converter but then do not allow that trans the transformer to saturate okay now before using a transformer in a dc to dc conversion let us see how to recover the energy that is stored in an inductor okay the recovery of trapped energy or stored energy in the inductor consider this circuit l is ideal switch is also ideal close the switch a dc supply is applied to an inductor 
so therefore current will increase linearly okay inductor is not saturated okay so current increases linearly now after some time i want to open the switch can i open the switch now answer is no if i open the switch i am breaking an inductive circuit okay so if i if i break an inductive circuit di by dt is going to be very large okay a large voltage spike will appear across the switch and it will get damaged okay so in this circuit if you see dc constant dc is applied to the inductor current increases linearly okay as long as till it saturates current goes on increasing you cannot open it if you open it a voltage spike will appear and device may get saturated what next i have closed the switch now after some time i have to open if i don't open inductor will saturate and switch will get damaged you should not break the inductive circuit okay in other words current through the inductor should be continuous therefore or in order to achieve this i will connect a diode across the inductor so in this fashion i connect a diode across the inductor this diode is also known as free wheeling diode okay and sometimes we can call it as fly wheel diode remember why fly wheel you know that fly wheel stores the energy when it is accelerated and when it's decelerated what happens it's it can supply the energy back to the load fly wheel concept same thing is happening here also i have stored the energy in the inductor okay and when i am opening the switch that inductor current will flow through the diode okay ideally there is no resistance or the internal resistance of the diode is very small so the inductor current starts flowing through this a uh, very small resistive circuit the value of the resistance in the circuit is very small so current slowly slowly decays almost similar to a fly wheel okay so you can call it as a free wheeling diode or a fly wheel diode okay so if i assume that diode is ideal so what happens when i open the switch whatever the current that was flowing through the inductor starts flowing through the diode okay so at this point you have opened the switch the switch current becomes zero instantaneously immediately that current starts flowing through the diode okay and this is the inductor current okay i am assuming inductor and diode are ideal in other words circuit is lossless so current will remain constant okay but then in a non ideal circuit there is going to be a very small resistance in a inductor as well as a small resistance in the diode so if i use a high quality inductor resistance may be very small but a finite resistance is present similarly diode also has a small finite resistance so when i open the switch the stored energy in the inductor is dissipated as heat in the internal resistance of the diode as well as the inductor since this resistance is small the decay of current is also very small a current decays very slowly so in this fashion okay decays very slowly okay so you may close the switch 
next time at the time immediately whatever the current that was flowing through the diode starts flowing through the switch. So, if I close the switch somewhere at this point this current the magnitude of this current or the magnitude of current that was flowing through the diode starts flowing through the switch. Okay. Now, by connecting an external resistance small external resistance in series with the diode okay, I can increase this rate of decay. Okay. So, by connecting a external resistance rate of decay can be increased. So, in the first case ideal inductor and ideal diode stored energy remain constant then I just consider the non idealities of inductor as well as the diode stored energy is dissipated as heat rate of decay is very small in the sense current decays very slowly to increase this rate of decay I connected an external resistance in series with the diode. So, decay rate increases in all two cases stored energy in the inductor is dissipated as heat. I will repeat in these cases stored energy is dissipated as heat. Now, instead of dissipating can you transfer it to a load or to a source? Answer is yes. How is that possible? Let us see. Okay. Now, before addressing this issue let me discuss briefly about the principle of operation of a transformer. I am sure you all know this, but I will just repeat it for a minute or two. Okay. A simple two winding transformer, okay. primary is connected to the source, secondary is connected to the load and we uh, place a dot at the both the windings. What this dot indicates? At any given time these two terminal dotted terminals have the same polarity. If this is plus, this is also plus. Okay. So, in the primary if the current enters the dot, in the secondary current should leave the dot. Okay. Why? Only then the flux produced by the primary opposes the flux produced by the secondary that is the principle of operation of transformer. Okay. So, dotted terminals are of the same polarity. So, at the primary side if the current enters the dot current should leave the dot in the secondary. So, only under this condition flux produced by primary opposes the flux produced by the secondary. Okay. So, therefore, if both the coils are carrying current simultaneously okay, which is the case here transformer supplying power to the load. Okay. If the secondary is complete, secondary circuit is complete IS will flow. So, equivalent current will be there in the primary. So, current enters the dot, current leaves the dot. Both of them are carrying current simultaneously. Okay. So, direction of flux is opposite. Okay. That is about the transformer theory which has been taught to us by our teacher. Now, the question is what if only one coil is carrying current at a time? In other words the primary is carrying current at the time secondary does not carry the current and vice versa. Can I have the same principle of operation? Answer is no. Why? We will see. Take this circuit. Transformer 
or two circuits are coupled okay i close the switch here in the primary voltage is applied to the primary winding circuit is complete current will flow maybe dc supply doesn't matter so if since it is a dc supply current increases linearly because i can represent the primary winding by a coil having inductance l fixed inductance fixed dc supply primary current will increase linearly i am when i close the switch current should flow in this direction that is the convention that we are following because if i close the switch current has to flow in this direction in this direction okay in other words current enters the dot current enters the dot listen to me carefully what is the correct direction of the secondary current if it has to carry the current simultaneously or at the same time if current enters the dot in the primary current should leave the dot in the secondary that is the principle of operation of a transformer okay but then there is a diode in the secondary so if the current has to leave the dot it flows in this direction and we know that reverse conduction and diode is not possible okay so therefore current cannot leave the dot current cannot leave the dot but then current can enter the dot current can enter the dot current can enter the therefore when i close the switch in the primary current is entering the dot the correct direction of i2 is to leave the dot because of the diode it is not possible therefore when the primary is carrying current there is no current in the secondary in other words i have a transformer and only one coil is carrying current in other words when i close the switch s only primary is carrying current there is no current in the secondary so if i use the transformer theory i2 is zero in other words i2 prime is zero therefore source supplies only the magnetizing current okay and that magnetizing current is the one which is flowing through the magnetizing inductor in the beginning i told that you can use a transformer in the dc circuit but i should not allow it to saturate so in other words i should not allow the magnetizing inductor to saturate after some time i'll open the switch what happens when i open the switch current that is flowing through the magnetizing inductor should be continuous you cannot break an inductive circuit in other words flux in the core must be continuous i cannot allow the flux to collapse in other words if flux flux collapses that is d5 by dt is infinity a large voltage will appears across the switch and it will get damaged so what next okay what will happen inductive current or flux in the core must be continuous when the primary current was carrying the current voltage applied to the primary is vdc with dot as positive okay what is the equivalent or what is the voltage induced in the secondary it depends on the turns ratio it depends on the turns ratio with dot has positive with respect to this terminal okay so what is the voltage that is coming across the diode when the switch is carrying current in the primary it is 
given by VDC into N2 by N1 because VDC is the voltage that is applied to N1. So, volt per turn it is VDC divided by N1 multiplied by N2 is the voltage induced in the secondary with the dot as positive. Anode potential of D2 with respect to the dotted terminal is now minus VDC divided by N2 by N1. Okay. So, if you see in this circuit, this is positive, so there will definitely this will be negative. Okay. This magnitude of voltage induced in the secondary is VDC into N2 divided by N1. Okay. Cathode potential is V2 with respect to the dotted terminal. Okay. If I take this as the reference bus or this is a reference point, cathode potential is V2. Okay. So, what is the voltage that is coming across the diode? It is sum of this voltage plus this voltage, is not it? Plus minus plus minus. Okay. So, what is the voltage that is coming across the diode? It is sum of these two voltages plus minus plus minus. So, voltage across the diode that is coming is VDC into N2 divided by N1 plus V2. In other words, diode should block this voltage when the switch is closed. Okay. So, this is the voltage that is coming across the diode, it should block when the switch is closed. Okay. I told you when I open the switch flux has to be continuous, but then when I open the switch flux was increasing linearly, when I open the switch flux starts decreasing, it tend to decrease. In other words d phi by dt is going to be negative. If d phi by dt is going to be negative, the dotted terminals are going to be negative. I will repeat here, see when I open the switch flux trying to reduce d phi by dt is going to be negative. Now, this is going to be negative therefore, this terminal is going to be negative. If this is negative, this will be positive. Okay. Therefore, now diode can conduct, diode can conduct and diode starts conducting and whatever that energy that is stored in the magnetizing inductor is transferred to the load, to the load. Okay. See in the equivalent circuit. Diode starts conducting. So, what should be the direction of flux produced by I2? If both the coils are carrying current simultaneously, remember, if primary as well as the secondary coils are carrying current at the same time, flux produced by these two coils should oppose. We found in this circuit that only one coil is carrying current at a time. When I close S, no current is flowing in the secondary because of the diode. Okay. So, therefore, the flux produced by the secondary when I open the switch should be in the same direction as that of the flux produced by the primary. Mind you, they are not being produced at the same time. Now, if it is going to be opposite like the same transformer theory, 
what is going to happen? Flux in the core is going to collapse because primary has produced some flux, immediately secondary current is starts flowing. So, it will produce its own flux and if this flux, secondary flux is trying to oppose the primary, there is going to be a, a flux collapse, a step fall in the flux. You cannot have that sort of a situation. If you allow that sort of a situation to occur, a large voltage will be induced because d phi by dt is large, a, a large voltage will be induced across the switch or a diode and they will get damaged. Okay. So, therefore, the direction of flux when one coil is carrying current at a time in a transformer should be the same or, or flux produced by the primary current, the direction of flux, I am sorry, the direction of flux produced by the primary current should be the same as that of the flux produced by the secondary current direction of the flux produced by primary should be same as the direction of flux produced by the secondary. Okay. Therefore, if I1 enters the dot, I2 also will enter the dot in the secondary because these two currents do not flow at the same time. Remember, they are not flowing at the same time. Therefore, if I1 leaves the dot, it should leave the dot in the secondary. Okay, secondary. Now you may say that why not allow the diode to conduct when the switch is carrying current in the cycle? See, in the circuit, you may say that allow the reverse the diode connection. Okay. Therefore, if I reverse the diode connection current enters the dot, now the current direction is in the secondary is to leave the dot. So, current current leaves the dot and current can leave because now I have reversed the diode connections. Okay. So, what is the primary current now? It is a magnetizing current plus the equivalent secondary current. Okay. Now, when I opening the switch, what will happen? I said magnetizing current has to be continuous. There is no path here. There is no path here. There is no path. Magnetizing current has to be continuous. Now, I said when I open the switch, d phi by dt is going to be negative. Dot is going to be negative. Dot is going to be negative. This is positive. I have interchange the diode connections are reversed. So, there is no path for the flux to flow or the magnetizing current is going to be discontinuous now. A large voltage spike will appear and will damage the circuit. Okay. So, therefore, diode connection in the secondary are very important. Okay. So, you need to ensure that only one winding carries current at a time. Okay. You should ensure. This is the okay. When the diode is conducting current, what is the voltage that is appearing across the switch? Okay. When the switch is carrying current, the some of the voltage is appearing across the diode that we found. Now, when the diode is conducting, what is the voltage that is appearing across the switch? When the diode is carrying current, Voltage appearing across the secondary winding is when I close this, when the diode is conducting, this is closed. Voltage that is appearing across the secondary is V2, V2, okay, with dot as negative. Okay. So, what is the equivalent voltage or reflected voltage in the primary? V2 here with dot as the dot as negative, therefore dot is negative. V2 into N1 divided by N2 is a voltage in the primary induced in the primary. Okay, so 
voltage induced in the primary when the current that is flowing in the secondary when the current flowing in the secondary only then this circuit is closed and voltage applied to the secondary winding is V2 with dot as negative. So, with dot as negative here voltage induced in the primary is V2 multiplied by N1 divided by N2. Okay. So, the equivalent circuit is looks something like this. I have a VDC source, a induced voltage with dot as negative, the voltage magnitude is V2 multiplied by N1 divided by N2 and switch is here at is open. So, voltage across the switch is VDC plus this one. In other words, S should block some of these two voltages when the diode is conducting. Okay. So, I try to explain the recurry of trapped energy using the first principle. The principle is that flux in the core should be continuous, only one coil is carrying current. So, direction of flux produced by the primary winding should be the same as the direction of flux produced by the secondary current because these two coils carrying current at two different times they do not carry the current simultaneously. This is using the first principle. Now, if you are not convinced I will try to explain using a transformer equivalent circuit. Okay. Now, to explain this I will neglect the leakage inductance or leakage flux and the winding resistances. So, therefore, now in the equivalent circuit only L m is left. Okay. So, this is the equivalent circuit. Okay. Transformer is only represented by L m. Winding resistances in the both primary as well as secondary and the leakage flux or leakage reactance is 0. So, I have only L m this is V d c and the switch here. I need to transfer whatever that is connected in the secondary to the primary. Okay. Now, what is there in the primary? Okay, primary I have to represent as, as it is VDC as well as the source. In the second day there is a battery of V2 and a diode. Okay. Now, how do I connect this diode? We found that when switch is closed or when the current is flowing in the primary, no current will flow in the secondary. I will repeat. We found that when I close the switch S, primary current which is equal to the magnetizing current starts flowing, secondary current is 0, no current flows because of the diode connection. So, how do I connect the diode in the secondary? It is, it is like this, diode and the battery, cathode is connected to the positive here okay. and V2 is the voltage at the secondary. I will transfer it to the primary. So, this is what it is V2 divided by N2 into N1 is the voltage here. Okay. Now, you may say that why did I connect this diode in this fashion? Now, assume that if I reverse this directions, now what will happen? When I close S, okay, some current is flowing in the primary. Now, if I reverse this, some current can flow in this fashion. VDC plus N2 V2 diode this way. Okay. Current can flow in the secondary when the switch is closed, but then 
we found in the circuit original circuit that when the primary is carrying current there cannot be a current in the secondary that's because of the diode connections okay so this is the correct direction of or uh, this is the direct correction connections of the diode so when i close s i1 flows in the primary no current can flow in the secondary okay after some time i will open s what will happen this current should be continuous i1 which is nothing but the magnetizing current because no secondary current i2 prime is zero so therefore i1 is only im so a fixed voltage is applied to lm i1 increases linearly therefore flux in the core also increases linearly okay so when i open s direction of i1 or flux in the core or the current that is flowing through the inductor should be continuous it starts is flowing in this manner in this way so stored energy here is transferred to a voltage source v2 is supplied to v2 okay now it may so happen that i2 prime the current that is flowing in the secondary may become zero or may not become zero when you close s for the second time okay now what happens if the current is finite or the current that is flowing in the secondary winding or i2 prime is finite we found that when i1 is is increasing linearly flux in the core also increases linearly when i open s that i1 starts flowing in the secondary the magnetizing current starts flowing in the secondary and it starts decaying in other words flux in the core decreases when d2 is carrying current if the secondary current becomes zero flux in the core also becomes zero so if the secondary current is zero before the switch is closed again the flux in the core has become zero so i1 starts from zero when i close the switch from the second time okay mind you i am applying just the dc voltage to a core the primary the winding either a positive voltage or no voltage so flux increases and decreases okay so if i plot the bh curve operation is going to be only in the first quadrant remember because when i close the switch i increases therefore h increases flux also increases in the core therefore b also increases when i open s flux decreases in other words h decreases flux also decreases so i am not applying a negative h okay so applied h is only positive i am always in the first quadrant okay it is a dc flux and the operation in the first quadrant only so therefore if the secondary current is zero for a finite time or it becomes just zero prior to closing the switch s flux in the core has become zero so what i say is flux resetting has taken place or i have completely reset the dc flux that was there in the core i'll repeat if the secondary current is zero for a finite time or it becomes just zero to prior to closing the switch s 
we have resetted the flux in the core. There is no flux, a finite flux when I close the switch S for the second time. Okay. So, if there is a finite current present when I close the switch just prior to closing the switch in the secondary, immediately that current transfers to the switch or to the primary winding. Okay. So, I 1 is going to be a finite value immediately when I close the switch. Okay. So, if I 1 is finite, flux is also finite. So, therefore, flux in the core is always positive, always positive, always positive. Okay. Now, whether to reset the core or not to reset the core we will see sometime later okay so we found that if i use a transformer you can transfer the energy from one source to another source okay so if i can transfer to another source i can connect a capacitor and i can charge that capacitor Okay. Now, what sort of a power supply we are talking about? If I connect a capacitor at the output of the secondary of the winding. Okay. Before doing that, we will plot the various waveforms of the circuit which we have discussed just now. Okay. See here, S is on, D2 is on. When I open, when I close S or during 0 to dt, primary current which is also the source current which is nothing but the magnetizing current increases linearly. Okay. Now, why is it starting from 0? It starts from 0 because in the previous cycle just prior to closing S, I2 is 0. I will repeat, it starts from 0 because just prior to closing S or much before closing the switch S, current in the secondary has become 0. If there is a finite current in the secondary just prior to closing the switch S, the primary current would have started from a finite value it is sort of a finite value and increases linearly. Okay. So, I have assumed that secondary current is 0 for a finite time or it becomes 0 just prior to closing the switch S. So, it starts from 0. Okay. So, this is the peak value which is equal to V d c divided by L m into d into t. Okay. So, this is nothing but applied voltage divided by the inductance into d into t, this is the peak value. At dt, switch is opened, whatever the current that was flowing through the magnetizing inductance starts flowing to the secondary. So, this is the di diode current or the secondary current. What is the equivalent current? this is I p is the peak current that is flowing in the primary. Now, this I p starts flowing in the secondary. Okay. So, this magnitude is depends on the turns ratio. Okay. I p is the current that was flowing in the primary. Now, it starts flowing in the secondary. So, I need to take the turns ratio into account. Okay. So, this peak and this peak are they are not the same, it depends on the turns ratio, turns ratio okay. and it starts decreasing okay. and it becomes 0 at somewhere beta. Therefore, flux in the core also becomes 0. If you see here, flux in the core becomes 0 at this point because I 2 has become 0. I 1 has started increasing linearly from 0, flux also has started increasing linearly from 0. It has become it attained a peak and became 0 here. 
there is a voltage across the diode when the switch is on okay because this term is a voltage induced in the secondary because we are applying VDC to N1. So, equivalent voltage that is induced in the secondary with the dot as positive is this. Okay. So, and the cathode potential is V2 with respect to dot, this is the voltage. Same thing is true here. Okay. Now, the secondary voltage when the diode is conducting, see when the diode is conducting secondary voltage is V2 is applied to N2 turns. So, this voltage is VDC plus V2 into N1 divided by N2. Okay. Now, what happens when the current has become 0 in the secondary? What happens when the current has become in the secondary? See in the circuit. Okay. No current is flowing in the secondary. No current is flowing in the secondary. So, entire V2 appears across the diode. Or diode is blocking the secondary voltage or V2. Okay. Diode is off. Similarly, no current is flowing in the primary because no current is flowing in the D2, no voltage is induced here. Okay. So, when the diode has become, current has become 0, voltage across the diode is V2 itself, no current, no current is flowing, no current is flowing here. So, voltage across the diode is V2. Similarly, no current here, so no equivalent voltage reflected here. So, voltage across the switch is VDC itself, VDC itself. See here that I have seen shown here. What is the color of the switch is VDC here when the or during no current period and voltage across the diode is V2 itself. V2 itself. If if the if it was a continuous co conduction or current when current were just become zero at this point, you would have had zero voltage across the diode in the entire period. Similarly, we would have had the same voltage in the entire period. Okay. So, when the current becomes 0, voltage appearing across the diode is the secondary voltage itself and in the primary it is the source voltage. More about it we will see in the next class. Thank you.